This is Neil Schneider for MTBS TV at Oculus Connect. We actually just enjoyed watching the Proto Awards, very successful. To my immediate right is David Combs, and I want to get this title right, Developer Programs Manager at NVIDIA. Welcome back, David. It's good to see you again, Neil. I say welcome back because you have a long history with this technology, even before NVIDIA. You were formerly with, with Sony, yes? That's right, that's right. And what are your responsibilities now with NVIDIA? I'm mostly working on the developer website, but I'm doing some uh, virtual reality stuff in my spare time. Some virtual reality, some virtual reality. Tell us what NVIDIA is doing in VR. So in terms of VR, we just launched uh, the new Maxwell chips yesterday, and those chips have been designed to be really good for virtual reality. So what we've done is we worked in the driver to reduce latency, uh, which is obviously key for a good virtual reality experience. The new chips are much better at high resolutions. They have some really nice features for anti-aliasing, which is obviously very important to get that smooth, non-juddery effect that everybody's looking for. And we've, we've actually done something really interesting in the driver, which is um, it's an asynchronous warp of the image. So maybe it takes you 30 seconds to generate an image, but we can ap apply a post-processing warp in maybe a millisecond. So what we can do is we can take the newest possible data from the motion tracking and use it to distort the newest rendered frame to reduce the latency between what you're looking at and what you're seeing to the absolute bare minimum. So it's pretty exciting technology. So you're talking about the asynchronous warp technology. Warp technology, yeah. See, uh, uh, all these titles. But uh, there's something else I understand that was done. Uh, is it correct that the frames are rendered like four frames in advance with GPUs? Is, I was reading it on the NVIDIA material that it renders four in advance, and now you're doing just one in advance. Does that, does that sound uh, about right? So that's, so yeah, so what you're talking about is how deep is the pipeline of buffers that are being rendered and ready to present to the screen. So yeah, you can, you can maybe have two or three buff, buffers, you know, frame buffers. One of them is being rendered, one of them is being displayed in this pipeline. So one of the goals for VR is to reduce the length of that pipeline to be as short as possible so that we reduce the latency. Do you have uh, some, some numbers as far as where the latency is today versus where we want it to be? Um, I, you know, I don't have those numbers off the top of my head. I'm pretty sure if you go to our website, you'll have them. But I think we're, we're, looking, to get that, we're looking to get that latency under, what is it, maybe 40 milliseconds or something like that? I'm just going off the top of my head. I know it's late in our day, but I remember it started something like 54 milliseconds, and now it took off something like up to 34 milliseconds. Yeah. Down. Very impressive numbers. We have, to shave that down. we have to shave it down as much as we can. And more than this, now I, I know, of course, NVIDIA has a cooperative GPU technology, SLI, very popular. Have you been doing anything in the SLI world to make it more effective for VR? Well, I mean, apart from having two, twice as many, you know, GPU cores, I mean, really, that's, that's, that's the main part with SLI, the main part of the story. Now, you know, uh, of course, NVIDIA has the 3D Vision drivers, that, which they were using for stereoscopic 3D. H have they been taking a look at it in the yes. VR world? Yeah, we definitely have. We we um, we have the capability to use 3D vision to automatically stereoize stuff to work with a head-mounted display. A little bit of tracking, head tracking as well. A little bit of head tracking. That's that's a software problem, obviously, on the game side. But in terms of display, we can take our standard 3D vision technology and apply, you know, the anamorphic. Um, warping that like is used for Oculus or whatever the head-mounted display is, and we can actually do that at the driver level, so the game doesn't have to do it. Now you are in developer relations, meaning I take it you work with the actual software makers to optimize. So do do they have to do anything special to take advantage of these new technologies? Um, it's going to depend on a case-by-case -case basis, but yeah, usually you're going to have to do something. I mean, the classic example, and you know this, Neil, from from stereoscopic 3D, is the mouse pointer doesn't work anymore. So they're going to have to think about how their user interface works and change some things like that to make it comfortable in uh, in 3D and then in 3D on a head-mounted display. Let, let me rephrase the question. So we're talking about latency reducing technologies, okay, okay. asynchronous warp, and so on. So when you're working with the game developers to support NVIDIA GPUs, do they have to do anything special to take advantage of these okay, new technologies? Okay. So we can pre-configure the settings using GeForce Experience. GeForce Experience is a software package that NVIDIA owners download, and it keeps their drivers up to date, and it provides the optimal settings for their games. So we can store the optimal stereo settings or the optimal VR settings for a game 
we can provide a profile that goes through GeForce experience and that ensures that the player gets the best possible experience. This concept of latency, when I'm thinking of latency, I'm thinking of like your head movements and the photons changing in the head-mounted display. Uh, do you think these technologies are going to impact traditional gamers as well? Is it, is, do you have to have a head-mounted display to benefit from these new techniques? A absolutely not. Um, anything we can do to re reduce latency and stutter and frame hitching is going to give uh, the end user a superior experience. So regular users will it will totally benefit from all the new technology that we're using for virtual reality. Wonderful, wonderful, well, excellent stuff. It's wonderful, of course, that you're working in this as well because you have this tenure in stereoscopic 3D and now you've put it on steroids and working in VR as well. So it's excellent talent going to good use. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Neil. It's, uh, it's a very exciting time to be working on this stuff. For sure, for sure. This is Neil Schneider for MTBS-TV at Oculus Connect. Thank you for watching. We'll be back with more.